Hey, Naperville, welcome back to the podcast. My name is Chris Grano. Today's episode is for anybody out there who has an interest in growing their own business from the ground up. It's for anybody who has an interest or a passion about photography or videography. And it's for anybody who loves to hear a good success story from a local mom and female entrepreneur. All that and more on this episode of Naperville Real Talk. This is the city we call our own. These are the stories of the people we call our neighbors. This is the heartbeat of our hometown. Naperville, this is Real Talk. Welcome back to Naperville Real Talk. I'm so excited for you to meet today's guest. She's a longtime friend of mine, and she's a successful entrepreneur, local business owner. I want to welcome to the podcast, Karen Miller of EV Photography Chicago. Karen, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing well. Thank you. Good. Thank you for being here with us. Yes, of course. I'm excited. This is the first time I've ever been interviewed. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> There's no pressure. It's just your old pal, Chris. So um, yes. I'm excited for you. So you're sitting in your brand new office in downtown Naperville. How does that feel? Uh, I don't think it's really sunk in yet, honestly. I'm still <laughs> like trying to get everything ready. And <laughs> yeah, but it's exciting. It is very exciting. It's neat to see um, where you've taken your business from where you started it and where it is today. And I want to talk a little bit about that. So, but I kind of want to get into the, just the background. So like when I met you, um, you were definitely using your creativity in a creative director kind of role. And I knew you did photography, but what for you, what's the story of, you know, the transition between your creative background to, you know, getting specifically into photography and then growing a company? Yeah. Uh, so photography, I feel like it's just kind of always been a part of my life. Like I, um, I can remember back in high school, like I was like super into scrapbooking. Remember then that was like all of our moms did it. I did it too. My mom got me into it. My aunt got me into it. So we would just have these scrapbooking parties and you would need a lot of photos. And so for me, it was just photos of my friends all through high school, all through college. And I have like these scrapbooks. Um, so I always just love capturing memories, I think more. So it wasn't so much about the art of photography. Um, it was about capturing those moments cause I wanted to preserve those memories forever. Um, but I, I guess the first time it started becoming an art form was, um, early college, um, an ex-boyfriend actually bought me a camera and I, we just started taking pictures. Um, it was like my first Nikon camera and, uh, just trying to get creative with it. And then I think just naturally anyone who has a professional grade camera, you just get asked by people to take pictures. So like my family would start asking me to take pictures of their family and, um, like my cousins are graduating. Could you take their senior portraits? And I'm like, yeah, why not? You know, like I did it for free. It wasn't even, wasn't even like a thought in my mind to charge money, um, for something like this. So because I was getting my graphic design degree, um, part of that was to study photography. Um, actually, no, yeah, I did take my first black and white. I think everyone takes their first black and white photography dark room class in high school. Um, so that I think that was the first time I actually started thinking about it as an art form. Um, and then college, I really did get to study photography. And yeah, I just kind of grew from there. More and more people started asking me to take pictures. And I was like, I should probably get compensated for this a little <laughs> bit. Um, so I started charging little bits. Um, not enough, that's for sure. But um, yeah, just doing family photography. That's honestly how it started. I, I love how you started for really from like the why. And I think that's yeah. why most people get into anything, right? I mean, if you, uh, if you know, you know, I have a background in music, you know, usually you start mm-hmm. into that kind of a field, any kind of uh, creative field, especially because you just love what it does. Like you said, yeah. you love making memories, capturing memories for people. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if you just get into any kind of business just for the business, just for the money, um, just for the whatever that you know yeah, the process absolutely. it's like there's no soul to it you know mm-hmm. so that's For neat sure. that you started that way okay so you mm-hmm. started out you started out doing photography on the side you started doing it more and more getting paid for it and but it wasn't a full-time job then yet right it, you, it you was still, not yeah you're still doing creative uh, graphic design and creative mm-hmm. direction type jobs 
Yes. So what was it that made you want to go out and put your, you know, your name out there and risk things and make it a business? So the first time I was asked to do a wedding, um, I was asked to be a second shooter for another photographer. Um, and I had just never even thought of, of shooting weddings. Like it's, it seems like such a big undertaking. Like this is the most important time in someone's life. Like, why would I want to mess that up? (laughs) That was always my thought when it came to wedding photography. So my friend had asked me just to be an assistant shooter and I'm like, sure, no pressure. I'm not the main photographer. I can do something like that. And I fell in love with the wedding industry. Honestly, that's what it was. Um, the beauty of, you know, the day, the dresses, the flowers. Um, it, it was just so pretty that I was like, ooh, wedding photography. That it just, I loved it. So being a second shooter was something easy I could do. And, and then I had that portfolio work. And then one of my friends from college was getting married. She was actually my friend from my photography class in college. Um, she was like, hey, can you shoot my wedding? I'll give you a thousand bucks. I was like, a thousand bucks. That's amazing. <laughs> like I never made that much money in one day in my life. So I'm like, are you sure? I don't really know what I'm doing. She's like, no, I've seen your work. It'll be great. She was really like easy going about it. Um, so that was like the first wedding that I did by myself. Um, and I, again, I loved it. I felt like I could just really express myself um, in a completely different way that I, I never really had the opportunity to do before. And because I actually had been married by that time, I was like, I, I know about weddings. Like I've planned one. Um, I can probably even help, you know, as far as coordinating what the day should be, what comes next, like, okay, I got this. And I have my creative directing background. Um, it didn't seem so intimidating anymore by that, by that point. So, um, but there was a point in my life where um, things got hard and I became a single mom and I had to figure out how to make money and support myself um, as well as stay home with my two babies. Um, At the time they were six months old and one and a half. So almost two, she was two, I think. And, um, and Liam was was six months and I needed to figure out, um, I know I'm living on my own now for the first time and I don't know how long and I got to make money and, and it photography just kind of fit into that. Um, I was able to stay home, edit photos, get a babysitter while I'm at a wedding and then be home again, just editing photos. Um, so it really just kind of worked with my lifestyle and it, I guess it was from that year, it was 2016, when I'm like, okay, I need to incorporate this business and I need to like take it seriously because this is, it has to start making money now. Um, So yeah, that's how it turned into a business and that's how I got my start. (laughs) Amazing. So it's a lot of things that came together, right? Like, like some trust from a friend who saw your talent Mm -hmm. and you had a good relationship with, and then a need from you. And I think that's how like any good business starts, right? Is kind of, as you, all those things come together and it sounds like it really did for you. Uh, you know, I was going to, I'm going to probably ask you to skip ahead a little bit and maybe even talk about now, but you already brought up like being a mom, being a mom. Yes. And, and at that point you were a photographer who was starting a business and mm-hmm. kind of skip ahead to today. And we'll talk more about this in a second, but you're, you're now you're growing a business. Um, yes. I, you know, call me traditional, right. But I feel like that's a unique challenge that, that moms have. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that maybe, maybe dads don't, I don't know, but I mean, talk a little bit about what that's like trying to grow this business and be a mom to two kids. Yeah. I mean, being an entrepreneur is in itself like super challenging and is not for everybody. Um, being a female entrepreneur is even harder. Um, and then being a mother and a wife and, and a female and an entrepreneur, <laughs> um, <laughs> Yes, it's it's been challenging, and honest, I've learned so much, and I've learned how to be okay with not being where I want to be right now. Hmm. Um, it's been a lot of ups and downs. It's been a lot of growth, and then it's been a lot of pauses. And say so it's just I can't grow right now. I have to just be okay with the season of life that I'm in. Um, 
yeah, and it's 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 good. I learn a lot in those pauses, and then like God gives me the go ahead. Hey, it's time to uh, it's time to take that next step, and it happens. I don't really have to push and and make it work so much when I feel like I have the blessing almost to move forward. If that makes any sense. So. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Would, would yeah. you say? It sounds to me, um, because it sounds to me like your family is, is your why is that, yes. is that right? Yeah. They were my inspiration. I mean, Evie photography, Evie is my daughter's name. Um, she was my, you know, she's my firstborn. She was my inspiration for a lot of my whys, um, very in the very, very, very beginning. So that's why, um, the company is named Evie photography. Um, and then, um, Sorry, what were we talking about? <laughs> That's okay. I asked you if that was if your family was your why. Yes, yes, yeah. my family is my why. So that also means that also means that my family is always going to come first. Um, uh, I'm remarried now, so I'm no longer a single mom. Um, thankfully, I now have help <laughs> as far as <laughs> childcare goes, and um, I I do though take my job as a mother and a wife um, number one before before anything yeah and it well you can you get that feeling in, in in talking to you and how things have grown and i think the beauty of that is that you'll grow things the right way mm-hmm. um because you have to do it in and, and like you and i are in a similar place in that in our journeys i'm, I'm growing a business as well as you know and yeah. you have to prioritize uh, i think the beauty of it is is it forces you to, to look at doing things the right way yeah because it, it, it forces you to have systems Mm-hmm. And you and I have talked about this offline before. I'd, I'd love to kind of pick your brain on that too, because yeah. I think a lot of people who are listening and watching are, are you know, people who might be interested in growing their own business. Mm-hmm. But talk a little bit about the systems you, you have to have in place and, and the leverage that you have to have in place to be able to grow a business and yeah. not kill yourself, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, and I always say this, if you ever want to start a business, especially in the creative industry, <laughs> Uh, maybe this is not the popular opinion, but it's my opinion. Don't go to school for art. <laughs> like if you're <laughs> creative, then you're creative. I mean, I'm not saying that my, um, I went to Columbia and I'm not saying at all that my artistic abilities and my creative thinking process like did not improve and did not get better. It 100% did. But I honestly wish that I went to business school. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is, knowledge would have been so much more beneficial to me down the road. I mean, granted, I had no idea that I was going to start my own business either, but um, I wish I would have taken marketing classes. And I, I would say that, like, that's one of the hardest things about being an entrepreneur is you are everything. Yeah. You are, you wear many, many hats. You are not only, you know, the talent, you're also um the post-production you are also the marketing you're also the, your financial advisor you're also your accountant you are also your administrative assistant and your project manager and it's it's non-stop um it's a 24 7 gig especially in the beginning and it, um, unless you can fully understand like that you aren't going to know everything and you have to figure it out as you go you have to be a problem solver you can't let obstacles stop you from doing anything um that's that's literally what an entrepreneur does they figure it out and they get it done and it may not be good and it probably isn't going to be good um but you learn you make mistakes and you learn Uh, i think i think you're right i think the like the the tipping point for most entrepreneurs is when they face those hurdles Mm-hmm. do they do they figure it out or yeah. or do they or do they crumble you know and yes. i think it's one of two things obviously you've you're figuring it out mm-hmm. um did you have um did you have an example to be able to follow have you had like some mentoring to be able yes. to do this 100 percent. get a mentor in your field that they exist they're everywhere and especially now with social media there's mastermind groups there's facebook groups there's people all all around you doing trying to do the exact same thing that you're doing so um to do it alone is not the answer not at all um so i remember and i think we just i talked about this like the other day with you like when i found my mentor um i was it was at 3 a.m um 
feeding. <laughs> I was <laughs> feeding my son at 3 a.m. And so I never used to go to bed because I, I didn't have someone to help me with this. And I, I was like, why would I go to bed at midnight just to wake up at 3 a.m. to do another feeding? I'm just going to stay up until 6 a.m. <laughs> when I can actually go to bed and, and take a minute when my family will be up and they might be able to help me. Um, so I would stay up all night listening to podcasts. Uh, I would watch Shark Tank. Any entrepreneurs out there love, they all love Shark, Shark Tank. Um, and I was listening to this guy on the podcast and he was talking about uh, six figure photography. That was the name of his um, podcast, Ben Hartley. I highly, highly recommend following him. Um, and he was offering mentorship and I signed up and he became my mentor. And honestly, it was that summer that I learned so many processes, so many like just tips and tricks and what not to do and what to actually put all my investments towards and uh, it changed my life. Like honestly, without his mentorship, I would not be where I am today. Um, you need someone who's gone before you <laughs> to help you figure out all those processes. Yeah, and and you're right. There's there no matter what industry you're in. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I would say even if you're in the most cutting edge industry ever, somebody's done it before mm-hmm. you. You yeah. know, I mean, most likely, right? And yes. and so you can have your own personal spin on it, but don't reinvent the wheel. Mm-mm. Right. Not, I mean, like, not be, at least not in the beginning. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Follow. I mean, and I think that's good advice for anybody in life. Like if you want to go do something and you want to be good at it, just go talk to people who are good at it. Yeah. Right. And figure out absolutely. how they did it, you know? And, uh, mm-hmm. one of my favorite, one of my favorite real estate, um, coaches says R and D rip, rip off and duplicate. You know, Um, and it's it's true. And then, like you said, then once you've got a basis, then you can you can do your own. So then you be original. (laughs) That's right. That's right. Um, So as you're growing, um, I know that, you know, in the past and and currently you've continued to add to your team. How -hmm. did you know when it was time that you just couldn't do it by yourself anymore? (laughs) When your family is saying, are you okay?" (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I think you need I think you need to take a break. <laughs> um, no, and honestly, this is something my mentor taught me, like remembering your why. Um, mm. when my why started to become less and less and less a priority on my list, mm. um that's when I really need to check myself. So if I am gone every single weekend shooting mm. weddings multiple days a weekend, um, how is that me spending time with my family? Like that me starting this business was the whole reason um, why. So I can be home with my kids and actually spend time with them. But if I'm gone all the time, then I got to figure that out. So um, adding to my team has allowed me to spend time with my family. I'm not shooting every single weekend anymore. Um, I've set boundaries for when I'm available. Um, That's the biggest reason. Um, And that's, why and how I figured out I, I need help. I need to start hiring people um, to do me, to be me in some yeah. areas. And um, yeah, I'm as much as I, you know, want to claim I can do it all. I can't. I can't. I can't. No, no, no. You can't, and you can't focus on the things that are the most important. Right. And uh, even in the business, you know, and exactly. um, I, so I know that you have, but I'm curious, you know, this thing's just a struggle that, I mean, gosh, I, I know I'm struggling with it. I just had a conversation uh, earlier today with somebody about it. How do you bring on people that you know will uphold your standard? Because when you started the business, right, it was mm-hmm. it was Karen, right? I mean, it was, it was your talent. It was your personality. It was your yeah. way with, it was your way with your clients. So now if people are going to be you sometimes, mm-hmm. um, how do you make sure that they get the same experience? I look for people who have the same values as me and family is a big one of them. Right. Um, I'm a Christian, you know, and I, I follow Jesus and I, a lot of my team members do too. Um, we have same Christian family values and, um, that's huge for us. Um, but I think the number one thing that all of my team members have in common is 
people are the most important thing in the world to us. Mm. Um, and that's what makes um, our couples like love and fall in love with our team is because they feel loved and cared for genuinely. Um, we're not BSing them. You know, we're not, it's, it's for real. Like you're getting our, our full attention, our support, our um, friendship. Honestly, that's what it is. And the team members that have, have stuck by my side the longest are the people who care about people. Um, and I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry. I mean, I hear it from my clients all the time. Oh my gosh, Jeff was so awesome. Um, he's out golfing with um, a past client of ours and they're not even our clients anymore. And he like <laughs> makes best friends with everyone he goes with. Like, honestly, that's the most important thing. I don't need to worry that they're shooting a camera the right way that they're creating this beautiful artwork. Like I said, talent isn't that hard to find. It's personality. Yeah. Um, so that's where I focus my attention. If I'm drawn to your personality, if we're connecting on major values, um, there's a good chance you're going to be a long-term member of my team. So. Yes. Yeah, I was going to ask you a question. I was going to say, how do you stand out um, in a mm. crowded marketplace of, of photographers? And I think you kind of just answered it. Um, yeah. And, and that's any business, right? Like, yeah. gosh, I mean, my business, right? Real estate, um, same thing, right? The million, million real estate agents, million photographers. Um, mm -hmm. In the wedding industry, there's a million florists, there's a million yep. DJs or bands. Very saturated. Mm -hmm. Right? And so you've got the way that you stand out is through is through customer service and relationships. Yes. And um, so that's, that sounds good that you're, that's what you're focusing on with your people, because I would agree with you. That's, that's going to make the difference long term. And for you to be able to go spend a Saturday with your family and know mm -hmm. that what, what's important to you is being represented by your team mm -hmm. at, you know, at the shoot. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, I would say the other thing that sets EV photography apart from um, a lot of different phot other photographers, wedding photographers out there. And, and I will say we are not for everyone. Um, we don't take every wedding that we're approached about. Um, we really do have an extensive uh, vetting process because not only do we want to make sure that our couples get a good wedding photographer, we want to make sure that we're working with the right couples. Um, and our couples always tell us, we see the moments that you capture. I want to feel that way. I want mm -hmm. to feel what they're feeling in that photo. And I want it captured that exact same way. Um, mm -hmm. I had, it was actually a groom. Um, grooms aren't usually the people that are gushing over our <laughs> photography. It's usually the bride. Um, but he was just like, I could tell that every photo you put up on your portfolio was really strategic and meaningful because even though these three weddings, I, I put three galleries on our website. Um, he's like, I could tell it was really intentional because this one was, you know, a classic traditional downtown wedding. This was more a rustic barn wedding. And this one was more a traditional like suburb wedding. Like it, they were very three different weddings. But one thing that they hadn't had in common, and by this was not me, this was the groom. He was telling me this, and it made my heart like leap a thousand times. <laughs> um, he said, I could tell that the consistency was I could see the emotion in every single wedding. And I loved that. I want my wedding captured this way. Like that specific thing, the fact that he values that, those are the exact type of couples that we want to work with. Because sometimes mm -hmm. couples will just be like, yeah, we're just calling because, you know, we have, we're having a wedding and I need to check the box of photography. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. need someone there taking pictures. They don't really care to have a relationship with me. It's yeah. not important to them. And that's okay. That's what's 100% okay. That's just not how we go about shooting your wedding. We actually yeah. want a friendship with you. We want to arrive at your wedding and feel excited to celebrate with yeah. you. We want to know who we're working with um, because I can't genuinely tell your story if I don't take the time that it takes to actually get to know you. Mm. Um, so the fact that that groom recognized that and, and he nailed it. Like that's exactly why I put these three weddings. They were so different, but they communicated the exact same thing. Joy, celebration, emotion, like people who are willing to be vulnerable in front of a lens. Um, those are the, the types of clients that we want to work with. And so when our couples see that, that makes me so happy. <laughs> That's awesome. I think uh, having worked in the wedding industry as well, mm -hmm. one of the things I always told couples was, you're not going to remember a lot of this. You yeah. know, 
I didn't remember mine. I mean, I yeah. <laughs> ask my wife. I mean, I remember a couple like in my head snapshots, you know, from mm-hmm. my perspective. But then the mm-hmm. rest of the rest of my memories are from my photos, right? Yep. And and we didn't, you know, really do videography. It wasn't as big of a thing then. But now mm-hmm. now certainly I I would absolutely do a video too. And you're right. It's all about capturing that emotion and. Um, you know, from the music end, which is where I used to be, it was the same thing. I mean, it was so much more fun for us uh, as a band to be involved with couples who who loved us, who didn't just want like a jukebox, you know, and like you yeah. said, checking the box. You're, they don't just want yeah. somebody to snap and, OK, make sure you get grandma on the photo. We got to mm-hmm. get grandma, you know, but to actually capture the emotion. Um, and that's who's going to like if the if the purpose of a business like yours, like any business is to create raving fans, right? Mm -hmm. Like you don't want to just like, you're not going to have grow your successful business just by having someone say, yeah, yeah, Karen was fine. You know, like, right. (laughs) You're going to grow your business by people just like, just gushing like that. Right. And, And saying like, oh my gosh, the memories and like, and, and so I think that's really strategic. So for, on your part, so for people who are trying, you know, trying to go on this entrepreneurial journey, whatever you're doing, you are so right that choosing um, your customer or your client and really knowing Mm -hmm. them and understanding them is a huge part. And it's hard to say that to somebody when they're first starting out. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, you're like, oh, gosh, I I just need the business. Right. Like. And I get that. I was there. I was that person. I was that person. I was undervaluing myself because I just wanted the portfolio work. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And you, and you kind of have to start that way and that's okay. I mean, that's, that's part of the, but, yeah. but really trying to figure it out and find that, um, I think is to kind of sum up the question. That's what's going to help you stand out. Yes. You know, Absolutely. otherwise, otherwise you're just like everybody else. And yeah, you know, so yeah. Well, and it just brings more joy to the job when you enjoy not only what you're doing, but who you're doing it for. Um, and honestly, oh my gosh, like when the pandemic hit, good grief. Like I needed grace. Right. And I needed people to understand that I'm human too. (laughs) Um, and so when the pandemic hit and, you know, we had to, you know, not work basically for a whole year, our couples are so awesome and they care about you just as much as, you know, you are caring and loving on them. And I had couples saying like, is there anything we can do? Can we put more money down towards our balance just to kind of help bridge that gap? And I'm like, Oh my gosh, yes, that would be amazing. You know, like that would really help us not go bankrupt so that we can shoot your (laughs) wedding next year. Um, We had couples offering to do that and just being really flexible with our next availability when we had to postpone their date. Um, it just made that transition just so much easier because they could tell that I'm not trying to just squeeze them for all their all their worth, you know, because a lot of vendors out there are like, oh, no, you lost your date. I don't care. That's a pandemic. You know, yeah. you have to pay all over again. Like, hmm. why? I, I didn't want to do that to my couples. Like, why would I do that? Like, you're human. You have a bank account, too. And like, I get it. I just I wanted them to still feel or, or at least I wanted them to know that we mean what we say when we care about you it's not about the business as much as it is about you um but granted we are a business and we do have bills to pay right so finding couples who truly value you just as much as you are valuing them yeah so i have to ask you and you don't have to name any names and i and you're gonna yell at me because i didn't include this on the list of questions but (laughs) (laughs) i have to ask you do you have any really funny or interesting stories about weddings because I've worked in the wedding <laughs> industry. I've worked in the wedding industry, as you know, and I have some good ones. What about you? <laughs> Ooh, like what's the likelihood that my clients are actually going to watch this? <laughs> That's... Anytime when alcohol and, right. you know, a party and celebration, you're mm-hmm. going to you're going to have some stories. Mm-hmm. Um, man, the amount of time people have almost thrown up all over my equipment. <laughs> that's the thing right. thankfully i i do own a photo booth um but i wasn't the photo booth vendor at this wedding but the best man had just like i know my clients are gonna <laughs> <watch this. laughs> they were so upset 
<laughs> they were so upset at this wedding, but um, their one of their groomsmen like just yacked all over the photo booth. <laughs> it was a That's cloth nice. one too. It was like it was gross. The whole place <laughs> smelled. It was really bad. Um, what happens? What happens at weddings stays at weddings. Yeah. Yes. For for the, yes. For the most part, because yeah, I there sometimes there's some super embarrassing things that happen. It's 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 funny. Yeah, um, it is funny. So we've talked a little bit about weddings, and that's how you got your start. And mm-hmm. um, I know you know right now it's the majority of your business, and it, it mm-hmm. may stay that way for a while. Um, but I know that you're expanding, so um, I know it's a little maybe a little in the future. But can you kind of talk about what you're you're hoping to get into as as well yeah so moving to the naperville location has been pretty strategic um, for the growth of the company um, we are hiring you know team members full time now um, which is gonna just take so much off of my plate as the owner um, and in order to to hire someone like i need a, a common space i used to meet my clients um at home in my dining room i kind of converted that into like a showroom Um, but i'm not going to ask now my employee to meet at my house so i needed a space so that's the number one reason why um, we found an office our studio and um i chose naperville because it's central to i feel like the greater chicagoland area Mm -hmm. Um, we do a lot of city weddings and a lot of suburb weddings um as well as we do travel the country and we do shoot um, different states and um, but I found that Naperville logistically seems to be a good mm, hub for all of Chicago um, so that's why we're here and then downtown Naperville where our office is located is just so fun it's fun down here um, our clients are like oh yeah we'll make it a date night because there's we're surrounded by restaurants and little shops and the river walk is right here. So because it's such a good central location with all these businesses around us, I kind of hope to start making relationships with all of these surrounding businesses. And if there's any sort of corporate events that they do or any sort of photography needs, like we kind of want to, we want them to think of us. Um, Cause yeah. again, we're all about relationships. Um, we want to know our community just as much as we want to know our couples. So um I mean, shooting weddings is very similar to shooting just an event, any sort of birthday party, corporate event, like doesn't matter. An event is an event. Um, There's not these once in a lifetime memories that you'll never have happen. Like at a corporate event, um, weddings are a little higher pressure. But um, yeah, I I do want to start offering our services to all the surrounding businesses in the Naperville area. Well, I think it's a... um... I think it plays right into it. I mean, I think every good business, if, if they're doing it right, is is all about delivering an experience to their customer, yeah. right? Whether it's a product or a service, they're trying to enhance their customers' lives mm-hmm. in some way that, that makes them you know, wanna keep coming back and, and yeah. purchasing that product or that service. And if you can help capture that or communicate that um, on behalf of the business, I mean, Listen, if you don't have, I know this uh, for my business, if you don't have a visual presence, um, mm-hmm. you know, through photos, uh, particularly today with video, yeah. um, you're just not going to make it in the next, you know, Absolutely. 20, 30 years. So that's very true. I mean, we just added, well, a couple of years ago, we added videography to our services, wedding videography. So we do have editing and, you know, shooting and, a team that is capable of creating media production basically. Um, so hopefully, and and we're all, uh, you know, millennials, Gen Z, maybe a little older, but, um, we're very, very, um, in tune with social media and, um, definitely something we can all, uh, offer our expertise on. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, and I think there's a lot of businesses that's still a transitional phase, right? There's a lot of businesses, I find this just with my friendships and, and relationships here in Naperville as well that, you know, people are all across the board. So there's people who are our age and younger. You and I can mm-hmm. cling on to keep calling ourselves millennials. Um, <laughs> know, I'm at the I'm at the upper end of the millennials. You're more like in the middle of it. But yeah. <laughs> but but the people. But I mean, honestly, a lot of folks who are in a generation, you know, ahead of us 
or two generations ahead of us, it probably doesn't come natural, you know, and mm -hmm. to do to do some of that type of thing. And I found in conversations with a lot of business owners who are um, maybe not quite as tech savvy, social media savvy, mm -hmm. they they have a hard time um, because it's just not a part of their daily life. They're not logging on to Facebook and Instagram and you know YouTube every five minutes like people our age and younger are. Um, TikTok. And so, yeah, exactly TikTok, right? Yeah. And so I think they don't, and I say this just respectfully, they don't maybe understand the power of it um, mm -hmm. in, in that you can you can communicate so effectively to your local community and across the world and and nowadays people are that's how people are creating relationships yes so like absolutely you know businesses who are doing videos um and all kinds of videos right fully produced highly you know beautiful videos like the kind that you guys produce um in addition to just kind of raw you know cell phone mm -hmm. things that's how you that's how you build relationships with your customers nowadays, whereas maybe a couple generations ago it was maybe mostly in person. Yeah. You know. So I think mm -hmm. there's a big need for that is my point in the business community. So I'm excited for you guys as you uh, as you wade into that ocean. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we'll it'll see. be very neat. <laughs> um, Karen, thank you so much for being here. I think the amazing thing about about our conversation that I know and I hope people will who are listening and watching will will figure out is is this journey from what we call in my world from entrepreneurial to purposeful and so mm. you started out you know just with a need and a, and a desire and you've really grown into something much more intentional which is i think the kind of the reoccurring theme that i've heard from everything you say so far today mm. and i think it's gonna be great uh, a great lesson for a lot of people who are trying to grow their own business and for people who want to get in touch with you and do business with you have yeah. um yeah have them capture have you captured their wedding or family photos or business how can people get in touch with you yeah, um, so the business is EV Photography Chicago. Um, so that's like literally everything. So evphotographychicago.com. Um, you can find us on Instagram at EV underscore photography. Um, all of our email contact information is on our website. So I, I just, you know, go to the website. Everything's there. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see uh, how the business grows and we'll have to Thank check you. in with you again. Thanks again for being here. Thanks, Chris.